it's time for another update video on my 2015 Dodge Dart Rally. I'm recording this on July 30th, 2022. I got this car used back in January of 2018. So over four years, I have owned this car. That is my current mileage. Over, uh, it was about 65. It had about 30, I think around 38,000 when I got it. Still have it today. And overall, I'm still pretty happy with it. If you go back and watch my other update videos, you'll see the different, uh, mods um if you want to call them that that i made through it over the years um mostly cosmetic things a couple that contribute to performance a little bit um but no I, overall i've enjoyed my ownership of this car i still think it's a good looking car um when considering compact cars i still think it holds up well today and i'm still sad that they stopped making it would have really loved to see an SRT4 Dart. Um, they had they had plans for that, but unfortunately, when they killed off the killed off the car, that uh, that, that took care of that. So, but um, yeah, overall, I've I've enjoyed my time with it. Knock on wood, I've not had major issues. Like it's never left me stranded anywhere. biggest modification I made to this car is this Hellcat hood. You can go back and watch my previous videos on this. It makes it look extremely unique. I've never seen another dart around where I live with this hood on it, so definitely adds a unique element to it. So since I made my last video updating the dart last year, a uh, few things. What has changed since then? Um, first of all, let's talk about what has gone wrong. Well, a couple of things. Probably the biggest thing was my blower motor slash blower motor resistor was not working properly. Half the time, and this happened uh, several months ago back in the winter, um, which... Uh, is a problem because when it's winter and you need a defroster, it can be, uh, yeah, it's uncomfortable not having air conditioning in the, in the summer, but it's more than uncomfortable not having heat in the winter. It's dangerous because you can't see out your windshield. So that was a problem. I definitely had to get that fixed back in the winter. Um, I needed both the blower motor and the resistor replaced. So, uh, yeah, that, uh, wasn't necessarily cheap, but had to do it. So that, that was working fine. Uh, no more problems with that. Um, unfortunately, uh, the other thing that happened is when my car um, got inspected this past um, December is when my inspections always do. It passed the inspection. Um, but while they were, I guess while they were testing the parking brake to make sure it functioned as a part of the inspection, uh, they must have, uh, I feel, I feel like they yanked up on it really, really hard, which I never do, but they basically broke it and it caused the parking brake to seize up. Um, I drove home all the way from the garage. I was smelling burning the whole time. I, 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 I figured something was wrong. Now the parking brake was in the down position. It was off according to the car, but it was actually engaged. And then I tried the I, I, I tried to fiddle with the parking brake. I had way too much play in it. There was no resistance whatsoever. It was kind of flopping up and down. I was like, oh, geez. So something uh, got <laughs> out of whack there. And it really made me mad because I feel like it was definitely the fault of the person in the garage that yanked up really hard when they were testing it. But, of course, I still had to pay for it. Uh, I, I didn't feel like fighting them. But, yeah, so that wasn't cheap. So I had to get that fixed. But other than 
the blower motor, blower motor resistor, and the parking brake. No other issues, no electrical issues, no engine issues. Knock on wood, I hope I don't start having any of those. Um, I was having some weird electrical things happen into this a, a, a while back, if you watch my other update videos, but ever since I added an extra ground wire to the battery, that seemed to have, for the most part, taken care of them. But yeah, uh, no major issues other than the, um, the uh, blower motor, blower motor resistor, and the uh, parking brake which um again was probably uh should not have happened were they more gentle with the with a parking brake yeah it probably should be able to to handle being yanked hard but i don't know it still makes me mad that that, that happened but whatever um as a part of the the parking brake uh, they also had to replace both rear calipers too um so yeah that wasn't cheap but um yeah, other than that, no major issues. Uh, the one thing that did happen, I uh, got a bit of a ding, like right here. Um, I'll throw up a picture of that. So I was in Lowe's, get done shopping at Lowe's, come back out into the parking lot to find a shopping cart smacked right up against my fender here. I wasn't even parked near a cart return. Apparently people find it appropriate to just mindlessly heave shopping carts down the middle of the parking lot and walk away from them when they're done with them. Um, I didn't actually see anyone do it. I just found it that way, but that's the only thing that I could imagine happened. So yeah, that's uh, not very fun. Um, luckily, I was able to find a small uh, shop that, that pulled out that den for me. Um, for like three hundred and twenty-five dollars, uh, and yeah, no, it looks really good now. You can't even tell anything was ever there. So, no, yeah, they did a really good job. So, uh, thankfully, I got that taken care of. One other thing to mention with my dart that is starting to happen that is pretty concerning is it is starting to get some rust, which is uh, living in the Northeast uh, pretty much inevitable. But um, it's happening on the insides of my doors. Three out of four of them are. Oh, getting rusty. So, um, basically what I did is I scraped, scraped off as much as I could. It was mostly just surface rust, um, but I scraped it and, uh, painted over it with some, uh, Rust-Oleum here. So, uh, yeah, that, uh, that is concerning. Hopefully it will not start to rust other places. I tried to mitigate it uh, by painting it, so hopefully that'll help. But uh, yeah, just uh, if you live somewhere where it gets cold and they salt the roads in the winter, you know that rust is pretty hard to avoid. Um, uh, Chrysler products aren't exactly known for um, being able to avoid rust that well. A lot of them end up uh, rusting out pretty badly. So yeah, that's just something I'm going to have to deal with. But um that is uh, one of the things I wanted to mention. Um, it's a 2015 model car. Almost, uh, so that's like almost eight years old now. So I guess uh, rust is something that uh, I shouldn't be too surprised about. But uh, yeah, that about does it for the bad things that happened to this car uh, since the last video. Um, so let's talk about some good things. So what has changed? Um, and I believe uh, one thing that has changed since my last July video was uh, my tires. So these are, I got these tires new as of last fall. These are the Michelin Cross Climate Twos. I made a separate video on these. If you want more information on these, you can watch that video. But, um, they are, uh, they are really good tires. They are not cheap, but they are, um, basically all season tires, but, um, they're a lot better than your average all season tire. They have tread a lot more similar to winter tires, but at the same time, it uh, functions really well in the summer. So basically, they're, they're they're the closest compromise between having 
winter tires on your car all the time and also being able to have tires that perform well. Uh, the compound and the treads adapt to the temperature. They can like expand and contract and all kind of fancy stuff like that. I have a little more um, details about that in my dedicated video about these Crest Climate twos. But yeah, no, they are great tires. They're holding up really well. Um, they performed really well. Didn't have too many huge snowstorms this past winter, but there were a few situations like that. Um, and they they definitely they definitely did really well, better than my old tires. And even in rain, heavy rain situations, I've never hydroplaned in these. And they, on dry roads in the summer, they still handle very well. Not a lot of uh, noise. Um, they're, they're just excellent tires. I'd highly recommend them. Um, Mitchell and Cross Climate Twos. I think they look really good too. They have a really like, mean looking tread pattern on them. Uh, yeah, they are. They are great tires. So that's probably the biggest and most expensive change I've made to this car since my last video. Um, but yeah, they are. They are impressive. Let's do a quick walk around. Of course, I have my caliper covers. Go into more details about those in other videos. Um, my Mopar decal there fuel door. A lot of uh, areas that I plasti dipped the badges here. This uh, this lip, easy lip. Uh, it's uh, getting kind of worn at this point, but it's still hanging on there. I uh, um, the adhesive isn't the best. I had to use some extra stuff. Um, most notably, the corner over here is held on. <laughs> you can see it, but that's literally a binder clip. But hey, it works. Um, Plasti dip the front part of the grill here, matte black, which I think looks a lot better than the, the glossy black that it comes like from the factory. <laughs> bumping my key fob and locking the car but yeah of course I just love that Hellcat grill that, that, or that Hellcat um, Hellcat hood with the, the little grills in it uh, another thing I changed since my last video I've had this spoiler for a couple years now just stuck on with um, 3M tape and it's held up well. It's not going anywhere. It's on there really good. Uh, but it was, it was just like an unpainted um, plastic spoiler and it was starting to get some pretty bad UV damage on it. It had some really like, like basically white spots on it that looked really bad. I tried plasti dipping over it, but it, the plasti dip just kind of fell off. It wouldn't really adhere to this material. I don't know if it's like a I guess it's like an ABS, but it just didn't stay on it. Um, so I resorted to wrapping it. So I actually just uh, recently wrapped this entire spoiler in a vinyl matte black wrap. And uh, for the most part, it looks way better. This is the first time I've ever wrapped anything ever, so I did a pretty terrible job at it. Um, but the top surface looks good. There's no bubbles or anything top surface looks great the corners um i kind of did not know what to do when you come to a corner so <laughs> yeah it's kind of just all tucked in under there and bunched up um if i open the trunk it looks really bad but you're not supposed to look at that so <laughs> i guess that's not so bad but um yeah uh not uh not the greatest at wrapping stuff like i like seriously leave a comment if you have any idea of how you're supposed to handle wrapping like things that come to a point like this like where are you supposed to like i guess you have to cut it at some sort of angle and tuck it somewhere like how how would you professionally do that and make it look good i don't i have no idea how you would do that um leave a comment down below if you have any idea for like for next time some pointers but yeah there's yeah corners don't look the best um but whatever kind of just have to tuck some excess under the little gaps there some uh some weirdness in there but overall overall i think it looks better than it did i'm not 100 percent happy with it but i think i think it looks better than having a uv damage spoiler so overall i'll i'll accept i'll accept the result
Just a quick look in the interior. Some uh, plastic dipped accents there. These diamond floor mats that I left, um, that, I, that I made a uh, dedicated video about. Um, they're still holding up okay. The ones in the back are in pristine condition because I pretty much never have anyone in my back seats. Um, there is a sl small kind of like fraying in the end or tear um, in this one on the passenger or on the driver's side, but uh, it's not bad. Um, whatever, they, they look pretty nice. I do have these Dodge rubber mats over top of them in the front here. I mean, plasti dipped around the uh, gauge cluster there. Some of this um, is like red, like trim strips I got from Amazon. Kind of just jammed in there and around there. Looks pretty nice. Watch my, uh, of course that comes from the factory, like that. That part's red. Watch my other videos to get a closer look at some of these things. Cheap Dodge leatherette seat covers. Not real leather, of course. But hey, I think it uh, looks pretty nice. Probably my favorite thing I did to the interior is plastic dipping around the, the vents. I think that makes, makes it look real nice. Well, I'll talk about this guy right here. This is my Madness Go pedal. Um, I talked about it in more detail in other videos, but man, I really do love this thing. This is, if you, if you get a Dodge Dart, if you do nothing else to it in terms of mods, get one of these, believe me. Um, it's a Madness Go pedal. They also make one called Pedal Commander, I think is similar. Um, they don't just make them for Dodge Darts. There's a bunch of different makes and models they're compatible with. But basically, it, 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 there's a cable. It plugs into the sensor um, for your throttle. And uh, basically, it... It, it tries to fix the, the big problem that a lot of modern cars have with an electronic throttle is the lag, the delay. Back in the days of actual mechanical cables, you know, throttles were instant. You'd press the gas and you'd instantly start moving. Now with everything computerized, um, there's always, almost always a terrible lag, but this basically takes all the lag away. And uh, it makes the car feel faster. Now, of course, it's not actually adding horsepower, um, but it gives the illusion of getting moving faster, so it makes the car feel so much quicker and more responsive. Um, I think these are around like $250 or $300, depending on which model you get. Absolutely, if, if you want to have fun driving your Dodge Dart, buy one of these. It's an absolute must. It makes it like a whole different car. Sometimes I'll accidentally like bump this with my knee while I'm driving, and I'll turn it off. And then I'll be driving, I'll be like, well, what's wrong? It's like, everything just feels so wrong. It feels like the car is broken almost. And I realized that I bumped this and turned it off. That's what a difference it makes. Like when it's off, you really notice, especially after you've been used to driving with this for a while. If you turn this off, the car just feels broken. It feels horrible. But if you turn this on, oh my God, it's just so much fun to drive, so much more responsive. And, if, and you can make, there's a few different modes, a few different adjustments of how much, um, you know, how much, uh, if you want to give it like when you press the gas pedal you can make it less aggressive more aggressive um but it, it just makes the car so much better madness go pedal an absolute must if you're getting a dodge dart and want to have fun driving it the other um big addition i made to the car since my last video and that is a new dash cam system so i've had a, a cheap dash cam in the front um since i got the car actually since even in my last car i had a uh, that same dash cam. It was just a, uh, from Amazon, a Yi dash cam, Y-I. I don't even know if they're still making stuff. Uh, if it was from Amazon. Just a cheap, like $60 dash cam. It did fine, whatever. Um, so I actually got two new dash cams recently. This is a Garmin. Um, they're both Garmin. Uh, the one in the front here is the Garmin dash cam 57. Um, it's capable of a 1440p video, although I keep it in 1080p, 60fps mode. Um, but, uh, there's the Garmin Dashcam 57. 
better look at it around front. And then in the rear, I, I got a rear dash cam this time as well. And this is also a Garmin. If you can see it hanging there. It looks from the inside. This is the Garmin uh, dash cam Mini 2. The Mini 2. And uh, with the Garmin app on your phone, you can actually pair both of these to work together as a front and rear dash cam system. So that's what I'm doing right now. Um, I've been wanting to do that for quite some time. I've had that cheap front dash cam for a while. Um, it was starting to have some issues with like the not recording properly. I, I, I was like missing chunks of my drive. So I decided to buy a new one and I decided to kind of go all out with the Garmin's here and I wanted to get one for the front and rear. So the Garmin 57 in the front, the Garmin Mini 2 in the back. Like I said, with the Garmin Drive app, they can kind of work together and give you a front and rear video at the same time. I'll make a dedicated video on these dash cams. Um, I, I just got them a couple weeks ago. I want to use them more to get a better idea with how they're how they work. Um, overall, there are some frustrating things about them, but overall, I, I do like them. They are expensive, um, uh, especially compared to all the dash cams you can get on Amazon for like fifty or sixty bucks. And the quality is pretty good, but I'm not sure it's that much better than the cheap Amazon dash cams, but whatever they are, it is, you know, probably the most reputable brand that makes dash cams or Garmin. Um, and uh, I am pretty happy with uh, how they work. Uh, but uh, yeah, for peace of mind, I've been wanting a rear a rear and front dash cam for a while because you figure a lot of uh, a lot of accidents happen by uh, people rear ending you. So it's good to have um, good to have a system like that, I think. A lot of people don't seem to care about having a dash cam, especially in the United States. They're not that popular. Um, I know in other countries, almost everyone has one. Um, but uh, yeah, for whatever reason, uh, they're just not that popular in the U.S. And I'm not sure why. I think there's such a simple, um, you know, you, you don't even have to get fancy Garmin ones. You can just get cheap ones that are good enough just to, just to have that extra set of eyes uh, always recording when you're driving. Um, you know, people are just getting crazier and crazier out there. I think it uh, is definitely a good idea to pick one up if you don't have one. Um, it can add a, a cheap and easy way to give yourself a lot of peace of mind. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I definitely like having them. And of course, I can't make a, a dart update video without giving you a little uh, sound test here of my exhaust. Aftermarket exhaust. I don't know the details about it because it was on the car when I bought it used. But let's uh, let's give it a little test, shall we? So I think that's basically it for this year's July update video. Like I said, go back and watch my other videos um, to get more, more information on this. Like I said, I'll probably make a video in the near future going into more details about my uh, new dash cams. But um, like I said, it's, you know, over four going on five years of ownership. I, I really do still like this car. I don't plan on getting rid of it. Um, uh, necessarily anytime soon, um, especially with the, the out of control prices of, of new cars and even used cars these days is uh, pretty ridiculous. So if you have a working car that, that it runs okay and looks pretty cool, uh, I, I don't see any reason to get rid of it. So I do expect to hopefully still have this at least a few more years. Um, of course, uh, rust is one thing I'm worried about. And, uh, you know, other things could start to go wrong with it, but overall so far, nothing too major. Um, and I am 
still happy with the car. Twenty fifteen Dodge Dart Rally. So uh yeah, thanks for watching and uh go back and watch some of my other videos and uh stay tuned for new videos.